Hello everyone, Zone Members here, and welcome back uh, to another Worst to Best. My favorite band of all time, this time, Genesis. Hello everyone, and welcome back to Worst to Best, and, well, my favorite band today, of course, Genesis. If you do not know who Genesis is in the pro community, then you have been living under a rock your entire life. Anyways, this band, ooh, that was, oh man, a long history with me in this band for sure, and I'm not going to get directly into it, but I am going to rate their albums from worst to best. Now keep in mind that some of these opinions may be controversial, and if that may be the case, please leave a nice comment down below. Tell me how I'm wrong. Anyways, this band, whew, my favorite band of all time. And there's good reason for that. Their classical orchestra, their, their, their classical sound back in the 70s to the, well, you know, to 1980 had them extremely unique in the music soundscape. They were one of the first on the scene to kind of take these weird, you know, classic, classical, a classical pianist, a Spanish guitar, a, a Spanish talk guitar player, flamenco, and you have Phil Collins on drums, and you have Mike Rutherford on bass, and you have Peter Gabriel on vocals, and Phil Collins, of course, but you see, over here, we like Peter Gabriel. I winked one too many times in this video already. <laughs> Anyways, I have my list on my phone here. Let's get right into it with their worst album, number 15. No one listening. Invisible Touch, released in 1986. Invisible Touch, released in 1986. Oof, Jesus. This is the album in which I have no idea what the gen what Genesis was, was doing. Oh, my God. This album is bad. And bad for one reason. This is their least prog album to date. And it... It shows here very very obviously it, it the lack of prog on this album sticks out like a sore thumb seriously the title track of invisible touch is the oh man i didn't even know that tony banks hated this kind of music he was just like no no i i heard an interview in which he would actually refuse to play this song live and Lo and behold, he ended up playing it anyway. If I can find that interview, I will link it down below and let you guys know. Even Tony Banks didn't like playing this stuff live, but he did it for the moolah. And it worked for him. He ended up, you know. But you know what? On those older tours, after Invisible Touch, and maybe even that, yeah, around that time, they were still playing some older... Um, Genesis, which was good for him, so he was happy enough to play on stage with these guys. So I'm, I'm okay with it, but there's really no saving grace on this album, except for one song. And it's it's not a bad song by any means, and the, the best song on this album for sure is um, Throwing It All Away. Throwing It All Away is a great song, In Too Deep. Tonight, 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 really good. The bris the domino, pretty damn good too. It's just the really, really pop songs on this album that just bring it down 100%. This album is trash, essentially. Without those, those, um, those decent to good songs, 
I wouldn't even consider this a Genesis album. I would consider this a Phil Collins album. <sighs> Anyways, number 14. <laughs> Genesis released in 1983. This album is fairly better. Not all that much. It was the album that was released before Invisible Touch, three years before. It's not all bad. I can't say it's all good either. The album opens up with a pop song, Mama, which was a huge hit. And that song in my is it's it's not good. It's pop. Nothing complicated. Nothing super interesting about it. No soundscapes really. And Phil Collins sounds like he's going through some really int weird things. That was weird. <laughs> and I hate that Mr. Mike Rutherford referred to this as his favorite Genesis album. Um, good songs on this album on this album are Taking It All Too Hard, Second Home by the Sea is pretty decent, and It's Gonna Get Better is the best song on this album. It's, oof, it's really good. It's it, Those songs keep it above Invisible Touch because It's Gonna Get Better is a song that is better than any song on Invisible Touch combined. Throwing it all away is a good song, but it's gonna get better as a very prog song. It's got interesting soundscapes. It's it's a weird, quirky song, and it's unique to the Genesis sound. So I'm just gonna keep it at that. This is a fairly decent album. It's better than an Invisible Touch. And any true Genesis fan will understand why. Anyways. Number 13. I am only a child. From Genesis to Revelation, released in 1969. This album is not all that bad. The best song on this album, though, is A Place to Call My Own. Very soft. It's, oh, it's, a, it's a really, really sweet, touching track with really well-sung vocals by Mr. Peter Gabriel. And... An interesting lineup on this album. It's Tony Banks, Mike, uh, Mike, Ruther Mike Rutherford, Peter Gabriel, Anthony Phillips, and John Silver, except on Silent Sun. But I'm sorry, I have to use Wikipedia because I don't know the official lineups for all these album cycles. All I know is that when I saw um, a place to call my own live by the musical box. I loved it. I, I fell directly in love with that song. It's on my playlist. It's in my favorite songs. And it, it's just a really soft song. The song, The Silent Sun, is fair. It's a decent song. It's very Beatles and uh, Bee Gees kind of thing. This entire album isn't very prog at all. Again, it, it, it's a different type of pop, though. This is more like the Beatles and the Bee Gees and the Rolling Stones kind of thing. And it kind of works, but Peter Gabriel's voice doesn't fit with these things at all. His, his raspy tone doesn't fit. Kind of like, you know, lead singer for Rolling Stones, but whatever. This album is better altogether than Genesis and um, Invisible Touch. I'm just gonna leave it at that. It's interesting, it has some really good songs. A Place to Call My Own is a is apparently one of the more favorited songs on this album by the Genesis community. So yeah, it's pretty good. It's not all that bad. It's still not great. We're getting into the better albums now, so let's move along. Number 12. We Can't Dance released in 1991. This album is really, really nice. 
it has some really, really strong songs on this album, such as um, Fading Lights. That song is unbelievable. It's got a brilliant atmosphere, it's got brilliant singing, interesting um, guitar, back, back, uh, backing guitar rhythm sections. It's got, it's got tight drumming and it's got an interesting but slow keyboard solo by Mr. Tony Banks, which I very much um, appreciate. A very well written song, interesting, very, very catchy, and an emotional song to end this album. Of course, when it comes down to the, um, the special edition or the B-side tracks, on the shoreline is a very good song as well. It's it's interesting because I have that song as well. It's one of my one of my favorite songs in this era, and it, it's a pretty good it's a pretty good song. It, it's it's more you know it's got its um, roots in. I'm pretty sure this was supposed to be on the Genesis album, but it never made it on. And it's a good song altogether. It's a really nice song. A few other songs like Driving the Last Bike, Hold On My Heart, those songs are fantastic. Driving the Last Bike is a very interesting, long epic on this song on this album. It reaches up to over ten minutes by eight it's eight seconds longer than ten minutes. What are you gonna do? Yell at me. <laughs> um it's Hold On My Heart. Soft song, very melodic, very synthetic. And Tony Manx really did a did a good job at um, helping Phil Collins out with this one. Driving the Last Bike is a really interesting song too. All in all, it's a really good album. I enjoy it. There are some songs on this album that are just bad, like um, Jesus He Knows Me, I Can't Dance. No Son of Mine is a pretty fine track too. It's okay. It's a pretty decent track. It's got a, it. Again, it's um. A little bit more on the poppy side, but it, it works. It's not a bad poppy song. It's not like the title track of Invisible Touch. Not nearly as bad as that. But all, all in all, this album is pretty good. It's not terrible, so I'm not gonna give it. A, I'm not gonna cut it, um, any points for that. It's five out of ten. It's pretty good, but it's not great. All right. Let's move on. Number 11. Abacab released in 1981. This one's interesting. People would say that We Can't Dance and Abacab are very interchangeable, and I would agree. This one is very, very interchangeable. They're very similar albums, with more of the poppy songs on this album, and it start, starts to move away from Prague. However, We Can't Dance started to move towards Prague a little bit more, and that's what made it great. However, there is a few songs on this album that are that do take the cake, and why I put it above We Can't Dance. For example, Dodo. That song is very ang weird. It's, an, it's a weird chord progression at the start, and the entire song is just super strange. The lyrical content on this song is top notch in terms of uh, the later or the midlife cycle of Genesis. It's very progressive. It's got a very progressive rock feel. And it's just, it's a great song. And if I am not mistaken, um, everyone wrote this song, yeah. The title track of Abacab is fine. It's okay. It's not all that great. No Reply at All and Me and Sarah Jane are pretty good songs. Keep It Dark is a fine pop song, I guess. Who Done It? Garbage. I don't like it. It's just too poppy for me. And same with Like It or Not. It's it, it turns into um, another rendition of a Invisible Touch but earlier kind of thing. Men on the Corner. That's a really, really soft song. It's in. It's interesting to listen to it every now and then because, it, as far as I know, it has the same lyrical concept as um, "It's Gonna Get Better." It's a really interesting song. It's it's more on the synthetic side as well, but it, it's it's catchy. It's got really good lyrics. It's got a very nice chord progression. It's 
a really well played song. All in all, this album is very good. Again, maybe 6 out of 10? And that's me being generous? Well, we're out of the top 5. I mean, the bottom 5. Moving to the top 10 with number 10. <laughs> Calling All Stations released in 1997, their final album. This album is pretty good. It's got it's one of the only Genesis albums that I can say that the pop songs work, and they do. Um, the title track of Calling All Stations is very dark, haunting, progressive rock song with an interesting chord progression. Shipwrecked is really emotional, soft, slow, really well paced. Ray Wilson did a really good song, a good, good job on this album. His singing on this album was really well put together. It wasn't Phil or Peter, but for a singer who was not in Genesis, he's pretty good. He's really well, he's a really well conditioned singer. His voice is really nice his tone is great and in some ways I'd actually prefer him over Phil Collins because after um, Invisible Touch I would much rather listen to Calling All Stations <sighs> this album is pretty good with its it, it's got solid songs um, even even uh, Congo that's a, a really good tune send me to the Congo it's a really good song it's it's poppy again but it works I, alien afternoon is a weird one not never really got into that song um, not about us not all that great either the dividing line is a really good song uncertain weather um, and One Man's Fool. Those songs are very, you know, they're, um, a little bit on the darker side. This album has always been on the darker side of Genesis, but, um, it's, it's a very interesting album. I like it. I would definitely listen to Calling All Stations before I pick up Abacab. So, all in all, this album is really quite great. I enjoy it. Ray Wilson did a really good job on it, even though it is so unbelievably low, low, low rated. It's a very underrated album. Either way, let's go to number nine. Trespass, released in 1970. Oof, this is this is the album in which people are going to drown me for my rating on this. I love this album. This album is fantastic. However, it does have its weak points. The starting track, Looking for Someone, very amateurish. It doesn't really go anywhere with that song. It has a few really good moments, the introduction and then the middle of the song, really well put together, but by the end of it, I felt like the song was just rambling a little bit and they were trying to extend the length. It is a good song, but all in all, I mean, it's not their best. White Mountain, same thing. It's it's a good song, but it, it could have been shaved a little tiny bit. Interesting chord progression, nice guitar interplay, every here and there. Um, really well put together song. Visions of Angels. Now this is a gorgeous track, in my opinion. And honestly, the chord progressions and the lead vocals are fantastic. But yeah, the, the Visions of Angels was a, is a really good song. Soft. It's interesting to say the least <laughs> it's a great it's a it's a great little song stagnation oh man one of the first genesis songs i learned how to play on keyboards that oh man i like how they would play stagnation at the end of um or, or near approaching the end of um um i know what i like uh, when they would play it live i, I like that they would uh, do a callback to stagnation that is really cool Oh, I love stagnation really long, but that one has no reason to be shaved off at all The interplay between quiet and more energetic moments on the song is fantastic Dusk and the knife both are fine I personally have 
And the Knife is one of those songs that were really dark for this band too. It was one of those, uh, the, the lyrical content is really interesting, but it's it's mainly the fact that it was a little bit too more, it was, it was too hard rocking on this song. It was more of a hard rock song than it was a progressive rock song. It was mainly the the lead, the the rhythm guitar overlapping with the keyboards, and it, it just it didn't mesh well. This album is fantastic. All right, this is also where people are gonna kill me. Number eight. And then there were three released in 1978. This album is fantastic. I love this album. I love this album. It's really well produced. Really. All the sounds on this album, in terms of, you know, actually having some good sounds on ter in terms of uh, keyboards and all that, really well done. The tones and uh, electric guitar, fantastic. Phil sounds fantastic. And with his voice and his drumming patterns on this album are top notch. Down and Out, one of the best Genesis keyboard intros it's it's on it's almost on par with um um watcher of the skies oh my god that took way too long <laughs> it's a really great song I, I love that song it's fantastic the interplay between the guitar and the keyboards and the lead vocals everything just messes meshes really well with that song and the song is in 5-4 Really fantastic song, interesting chord progression, interesting time signature. Can't get much better than that with a Genesis song of this era. Undertow, really nice song, really quiet. I love it. Banks wrote this one, and it's clear. Because, I mean, there's almost no electric guitars in this. And if there is, they're practically covered by Mr. Banks' keyboard playing. This album is fantastic. Snowbound, fantastic song as well, written by Rutherford, and it's just a really nice, soft song. I, whenever I listen to it, I get the feeling of winter. Canadian winters suck. Burning Rope, very interesting song, a little bit on the longer side. Really well put together by Mr. Banks as well. Really nice song. Interesting chord progressions as well. Deep in the mother load. It's an, it's an interesting song, not really my taste. Many too many. It's a fine song as well. Um, say it's alright, Joe is... Eh, it's alright. The Lady Lies and Follow You, Follow Me. Follow You, Follow Me is a fantastic song. And say so is The Lady Lies. All, all, fantastic album. I gotta, you know, give it to them. The Day the Light Went Out in Vancouver, very interesting songs too on the B-side. It, it's a, it, it's one of those albums that you know you have to listen to a couple of times to get the actual idea of this, but it's a great album, love it, have it on my phone, really good. <sighs> Number 7. From a dance forest of tall dark Nursery Crime released in 1971. Um, this is where people are gonna rip me apart. Okay, hear me out here. Hear me out. It it has the same problems that Trespass did. However, it they did it better on this album, and it showed the musical box, huge dynamics going from top to bottom, and then back up and down. That dynamicism, fantastic. It's a great song. For Absent Friends, very interesting track as well. The Return of the Giant Hogweed. Oh man, <laughs> this is a song. And it's one of the better ones on this album. It's, I just love the, the way that Peter Gabriel would write these weird, quirky lyrics. And I know that he had a little bit of help with these lyrics too, but he would just make such interesting lyrics. And the story of the song, Weird. I love it though. It, it's it's so quirky. I love it. I love it. Seven Stones, absolutely beautiful track. In it, it's ingenious at that point. It's beautiful. Harold the Barrel. 
Now don't get fooled by this one. It's very happy-go-lucky. But those lyrics... Whew. And those end chords. Jesus Christ. It goes from such a happy little thing to all of a sudden being the death of you because the song is very dark. Go listen to it. It's very dark. Do it. Harlequin, also, oh man, that's a gorgeous track as well. Short, really well done, interesting. The Fountain of Salmasis. A fan favorite, and for good reason. Oh, Fountain of Salmasis, one of my favorite songs. And for good reason, if you guys are Genesis fans, and you love Nursery Crime, and you know the Fountain of Salmasis, and it's your one of your favorites too, you'll understand why. Beautiful track, really fantastic chord progression, really well done on the drums by Mr. Phil Collins again, and the harmonies on this album, fantastic. This is the one that's that people are probably gonna lose their shit about, but I don't really care. Number six. <laughs> Duke, released in 1980. I know that some Genesis fans are going to be looking at me like, you would put Duke over nursery crime? What the hell is wrong with you? Here's the reason why. This album is 100% consistent. The pop songs on this album are good. They're really good. Um, misunderstanding, it gets a little bit old. But it's, it's, it's still a fine song behind the lines. Those chords at the beginning, it, that drum beat that, that is produced in the little guitar licks and little, little um, solos interplayed by Mr. Rutherford, he's not as bad as a guitar player as, as many people would have thought, but he's not a fantastic guitar player by any means. If I'm not mistaken, this album is all about Phil Collins' divorce. Which is an interesting little um, note to put put on the on in the in your notes. <clears throat> Duchess, really, really gorgeous song. The lyrics on this song on this entire album are fantastic. I don't think I can, you know, I don't think this album can take any hits lyrically. Songwriting, it does have a few songs that are, you know, poppy, but it brings them down just a little bit. All in all, this album is fantastic. I would put, put this higher, but there are a few better albums, so... Let's continue talking about Duke. Guide vocal. Keyboards. I think on this album it was a CB70. Correct me if I'm wrong. And Mr. Phil Collins' voice. <sighs> Guide vocal is an emotional roller coaster. This entire album is an emotional roller coaster, let's be honest here. Man of Our Times, Rutherford Song. Really, really good Rutherford Song. Fantastic. Really great. Misunderstanding, obviously. Collins Song. Hethes. Another a Banks song, of course, but it's a really, really, really good song. Turn It On Again by all, all of them, which, by the way, is not in 13 Against 8. It's in 13-4. Okay, it's not in 13-8. It's 13-4. God. I can't believe I actually have to do that. Eighth Notes. Bup, 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 bup. It would be in 26 against 8, that would make more sense, but this album is in 14, it's in 13 against 4. Boom, 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 boom. Those are quarter notes. I hate, I hate to say it, but Phil Collins needs to understand that the bottom changes. For example, Apocalypse in 9-8 is 9-4. It's not 9-8, it's in 9-4. Alright, understand. Good. Alone Tonight. Really, really, really good song as well. Great. Cul-de-sac, again, fantastic. Please don't ask. Another emotional roller coaster on this song. The lyrics, 
the songs, the chords, everything about that song is an emotional roller coaster. Duke's Travels and Duke's End, brilliant songs. And I like the callback in Duke's Travels for um, Guide Vocal. I like that callback. It's a really clever callback and it works. It's the one of the only callback systems that I can actually say that really works in this sense. It's a fantastic song. I can't credit for that. On the B side, Open Door, weird track. Can't say much about that. And Evidence of Autumn. Very much like Hethe's Cul de Sac and all the other Banks songs on this album. It's. I wish Evidence of Autumn was on this album. It's sad that they didn't include it on the final copy, but what a beautiful song. I love it. It's unbelievable. Now we're in the top five. Woohoo! This is a long video. <laughs> Number five. Trigger the Tail released in 1976. Great album. Really, it's very strong. In it, and. It's the first album without Phil Collins on it. I mean, without Phil Collins, without Peter Gabriel on it. And it's it's really good. The opening track, Dance on a Volcano, really interesting. And it feels a lot longer than it actually is, which in this case is good. Because the keyboards, the, the chord progression, everything on this song is fantastic. It's a great song, Entangled. Unbelievable, in my top three favorite Genesis songs of, of all time, if not my favorite. Second favorite, second favorite. One other cannot beat it. And I will explain that soon. Squonk, great song as well. Very prog too. Man Man Moon, very Banksy song, longer, very great. Robbery Assault and Battery, amazing song. It's, it's, there's not one bad song on this album. However, there are some weaknesses. For example, even though every song on this album is fantastic, it it just feels like the album's going forward in terms of songwriting ability are better and I can't really explain that really you'd have to go listen to this one if you're a hardcore Genesis fan you'll understand what I'm talking about here next album <laughs> number four Wind and Wuthering released in 1976 two albums in one year Mother shit. <laughs> this album it, it actually is a little bit stronger than the previous, and for good reason. As much as everything was very hardcore prog on the previous album, that was one of the things that kept it down. It didn't. It was consistent, but it was almost too consistent. It, if if you understand what I mean, think of it like this: Eleventh Earl of Mark, fantastic opening track very good guitar intro with keyboards actually I think on this yeah well it was a keyboard intro with um with um with the uh, synths and uh Mellotrons underneath it because okay I'm sorry I apologize I listened to the Steve Hackett Re Re Genesis Revisited album and he does it on guitar so that was that was my mistake one for the vine fantastic song your own special way the, 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 the pop song that is just you can tell Phil Collins it's it's out of his vocal range it's very it's almost a country song actually if I really think about it it's not all that great what girl a great song really short and it's it's got interesting chords and it's got oh, Mr. Banks uh, little noodles in in between those little songs it's just fantastic it's a great song. I don't know why people don't like it so much. I think some people find Walk Gorilla very boring. I find it a great song. I think it's great. And it's a short song, so it doesn't take up that much space on it on the disc. All in a Mouse is Night. Banks song again. A little bit longer. Very good. Um, 
chord progressions and time signatures in this one too. The time signatures in this song is is, is they're whack. Um, Blood on the rooftops. That's a Hackett piece. Of course, you have to have a guitar intro for an even more beautiful song, right? Man. That's one of the things that this album did better than the previous. When it came to those quieter songs, this one had more, but they but the quieter songs were written better. Ripples is a fantastic song, but Blood on the Rooftops is in the top three best songs. Ripples probably at fourth. Still up there. Unquiet Slumbers for the Sleepers and That Quiet Earth. Fantastic instrumental two parts too one a little bit faster and one going into the other part of the song which is a little bit slower and i love the fact that in 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 that quiet earth fades into afterglow afterglow is a fantastic song great job banks and the chord progression it was another song by genesis that i learned on the keyboards and in fact if you go through my video history you will see me playing keyboards to afterglow if you want to go check that out go find it Anyways, we're in the top three now. Number three. The Lamb Lies Down on Broadway, released in 1974. This album is great. It's a concept album. It's, it's a double disker, so it's going to be interesting. And apparently, it had four sides? Really? That was the vinyl? Jesus Christ. Okay, in the opening track, The Lamb Lies Down on Broadway, Fly on the Windshield, every song on this album is great. Except, I'm not a huge fan of Counting Out Time. It's a good song, just not in my favorites. The Chamber of 32 Doors and The Carpet Crawlers, unbelievable. It's a reason, there's a reason why those two are fan favorites. Um, L Lily White Lilith, fantastic song as well. The Waiting Room, crazy song live. I saw it live by the musical box again. Unbelievable. The stage play, the the um, the uh, the weird animation and the way that uh, Phil um, Peter Gabriel moved around, fantastic. Anyway, really good song too. Um, here comes the supernatural. Um. <laughs> I don't want to even attempt to say that. I think I could, but I'm tired. But, interesting song too. Not all that great. It's a good song though. The Lamia. This album nailed those really interesting, softer songs too. It did it better than, the, than uh, Wind and Weathering in that sense. Really great song. Sor Silent Sorrow in Empty Boats. Really nice instrumental, really great. The Colony of Slipperman, probably one of the hardest keyboard solos I've ever learned. It's a really good keyboard solo, fantastic. I love this album, this that song. My bad. It's great. Uh, Ravine, another instrumental, fantastic. Uh, the light, the light lies down on Broadway. A cool little callback system to the beginning of the album. Writing the scree. Which, by the way, if you actually listen to the medleys, um, I th when they do cinema show, the the little um, keyboard solo for that one, they add in the right writing of the scree. I think about three times faster than the actual song itself. In the rapids, fantastic song, and it. This this album is fantastic. I cannot complain about it. It is obvious that, that it was a little bit separated in terms of songwriting. And it was the last album that F P uh, Peter Gabriel was on, but it's a really good album. Anyway, um, these last two albums it took me a while. I've kind of figured out which one I'm going I kind of knew which one was going to be at number one, but it was still a pretty hard decision because I have a very strong connection with the second one but I have a little bit more of a strong connection with the first one, so, number two. Foxtrot, released in 1972. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, this is where people are going to be, you know, agreeing with me. Maybe, I don't know. Watcher of the Skies, fantastic opening song. 
Um, timetable. Beautiful. Get him up by Friday. Corgi, but interesting. Can you tell any in the coastliners? My favorite song by the band of all time. Cannot get better than this song. A very good um, uh, Mellotron chords after the, the the singing. Everything is just so good about that track. I cannot, I can't understand how they managed to make such a fantastic song. Fantastic. Horizons, beautiful little guitar interlude. Before we get into the big piece of Supper's Ready, the longest track by Genesis. And the entire track is fantastic. There's nothing I wouldn't that is hateable on this album. But the reason why it's at number two. It's it it mainly comes down to um the structure of the album. I can't even lie. This album in the in number one, which you already know who what it is, it, they're pretty much tied. I couldn't I could barely pick it. Now you know what number one is. Number one. Selling England by the Pound released in 1973. Now I can't give you a def I can't give you an actual answer as to why factually this is at number one. All I can tell you is that one, it is the most it is the highly the highest rated album by um by Genesis and for the for good reason. It's got interesting time signatures every here and there. Fourth or fifth, great. I know what I I know what I like in your wardrobe. Dancing out with the moonlit night dancing with the moonlit night, sorry. More Fool Me, good little quiet track, love it. Uh, the entire album, I just love it. It, it man, The solos on this album are slightly better though, uh, on this album than on Foxtrot, technically. And there's more keyboard solos on this album. But, it was hard. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please leave a like, share, and subscribe. Let me know what I should do next. Thank you guys so much for watching. Peace.